वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज ट्रेडी स्टॉप एंड यू आर वाचिंग सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरूटो चेंज आफ्टर वेव आर्क इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नो वेस्टिंग नो मोर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट द स्टोरी इट हैड बीन 2 मंथ्स सिंस टीम एंकोस फर्स्ट मिशन द फॉलोइंग डे नरूटो मेट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटिमिडेटिंग मेन ही हैड एवर सीन हियाशी हियागा द हेड ऑफ द हियागा क्लैन हैड बीन समन टू इन्वेस्टिगेट नरूटो Hiyashi had stated that Naruto was at half strength, but that was more than enough to complete a simple C-ranked mission on the hardest difficulty. In the 3 days they were together, they had completed 5 C-ranked delivery missions to towns around Konoha and 10 D-ranked missions. Naruto's chakra level had returned to normal by the end of the second day after their return. It was later revealed to Naruto that Hiyashi Hyuga was actually Hanada Hyuga's father. and as naruto's affections for the shy hyuga grew so did his fear of him with each training session the two became closer it had become commonplace to see the two together on one of their little outings people were shocked at first and immediately went to hiyashi who dismissed them however naruto sasuke and sakura were currently waiting for kakashi to arrive but he was already 2 hours late Naruto was apparently smarter than Sasuke because he inserted earplugs to protect himself when Kakashi finally appeared. Where has he gone? Sakura yelled. I'm not sure. Naruto stated while reading her lips. Sakura's whining was cut short when Kakashi appeared in the smoke. You've been late. Sakura screamed so loudly that Naruto could clearly hear her. But Sasuke and Kakashi didn't have the same safeguards as him. Kakashi made up some nonsense about getting lost on the road of life, but Naruto ignored him as he revealed the true reason he was late. I have nominated 3 of you for the Chunin exams. said Kakashi. Are you serious? Naruto surprised everyone by asking. No why? Kakashi inquired obliviously. Perhaps because you essentially abandoned Sakura and me in favor of training Sasuke. Naruto said coldly to Kakashi. Naruto's regard for Kakashi has dwindled over time as he has served as Naruto's sensei. You already know Naruto is correct, Kakashi. Sakura stated. When Sakura and Naruto realized they were only being told to do chakra control exercises, they stopped referring to Kakashi as sensei. I will not put up with this. As he looked at the two, Kakashi said. All repo. You report to us and we report to you. Naruto stated. And open favoritism is punished far harsher than disobeying simple training orders. Naruto informed Kakashi. What makes you so envious? Sasuke inquired. As if, Naruto remarked. I am a water wind time. Naruto informed Sasuke. He can't copy most wind jutsu because they don't involve hand signals. Naruto stated. So he's a waste of time as my sensei. Naruto informed him. Asuma sensei or even Kurenai sensei would be better for me. Naruto said as he walked away with a sheet in his hand. I'll think about it. Naruto said as he walked. Sakura took her sheet and followed Naruto. What are your plans, Naruto? Sakura inquired. To the academy, Naruto declared. Uruka Sensei has requested that I appear because my new nickname has spread throughout the land of fire. Naruto elaborated. Ah, the dreaded black death of Konoha. Sakura agreed by nodding. So, what are your plans? I was considering doing the void shunshin. Naruto stated. And saying something scary to them. Naruto informed her. Then I'll take Konohamaru and keep him at home for a while. I'll promise to teach him a very powerful ninjutsu technique. As they walked through Konoha towards the academy, Naruto told Sakura Naruto presented her with a genjutsu scroll. 
Why don't you go practice while I scare some academy students? Naruto inquired, nodding. Naruto nodded and vanished into the darkness. Iruka's School Iruka was in the middle of teaching his class when a black sphere appeared and quickly dissipated, revealing a cloaked form. Damn Naruto knows how to make a statement. Iruka pondered. Alright, everyone, today we have a special guest. Iruka yelled, capturing everyone's attention. This is Naruto Uzumaki, also known as the Black Death of Konoha, one of my former students. As everyone began to whisper to their friends, he said. He has come to tell you about the life of a shinobi. You never told me that. Naruto stated unequivocally. Anyway, I wasn't planning on giving a lecture, but if you want, I can show you a few ninjutsu that I've learned. Naruto stated. It will demonstrate that hard work. And several hundred clones. In his head, he added. Will give you more power than being handed it to you. Naruto said as he looked at Iruka for approval. Alright, class, let's go outside so Naruto can perform a small demonstration. As the class applauded, Aruka said. It wasn't long before everyone was outside. Alright, everyone, I'm a wind and water user. Naruto informed them. Does anyone have a jutsu they'd like me to demonstrate? Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi all raised their hands. Alright, you three, which one do you want to see? Again? Winter Dragon. Konohamaru exclaimed enthusiastically. Okay. With a sweat drop, Naruto said. As dark clouds began to form around the academy, Naruto closed his eyes. Soon after, a cyclone formed in the shape of a serpentine dragon. Naruto directed it to perform some aerial acrobatics. It vanished quickly after that. Except for the Konohamaru Corps, Everyone was taken aback by Naruto's strength. Then, Naruto said. The tidal wave. Moegi yelled. I need Hinata-chan to perform that jutsu. Naruto informed her. It's a jutsu combination, Naruto explained. How about the other one you've been working on? Udon inquired. I suppose I can show that one. Naruto stated. This is a complete nature manipulation jutsu. Naruto explained that as he held his hands together next to his sides, a wind sphere formed in his hands. He collided with a training post, and nothing happened to it for the first second before it exploded in splinters. One more before we go inside, Naruto added. Could you show us your speed? Moegi inquired. I suppose I can do that, but it's not jutsu. It's just weight training, Naruto stated. Extreme weight training. As he heard QB snicker, Naruto added in his head. However, I can show you. Naruto said as he vanished and reappeared throughout the class. They were in awe of Naruto, despite the fact that he was slowing down. All right. Everyone, it's time to go back inside because I have something important to tell you. As they all rushed into the classroom, eager to hear what the Black Death had to say, Naruto said. Once inside, Naruto had a gleam in his eye that Aruka was all too familiar with. Alright, everyone, I'm going to say this once, so pay attention. Naruto stated as all of the students eagerly leaned forward. If Aruka sensei has a bad student, he will summon me to deal with them in whatever manner I see fit. Naruto said this as he vanished behind Konohamaru. You were first on the list. As the two vanished in a black sphere, Naruto said. What do you think he'll do to Konohamaru? Was the most frequently asked question. All right, everyone, keep quiet. As the room fell silent, Aruka spoke up. Oh, I'll have to thank Naruto for this. Iruka pondered. Naruto is involved. Naruto and Konohamaru walked up to the Serutobi compound. 
I don't want you to go to school or walk in public for at least four days, Konohamaru. Naruto stated. It's part of the prank I'm pulling. As the boy nodded and opened the gate for them, Naruto added. I'm home, mom. Konohamaru yelled. What are you doing home so early? Asumi, his mother, inquired. Oh, Naruto ni san took me out to teach the class. Konohamaru explained. What exactly is that? Asumi inquired. To listen to Iruka sensei or suffer the wrath of the Black Death. Naruto said with a smile and a shake of her head. He needs to be out of school for at least a week in order for the lesson to sink in. Naruto stated. Don't worry, I'll come over and teach Konohamaru everything he'd learn in the academy. Naruto elaborated. I have a C-rank mission with Anko Ne chan today, so I'll see you tomorrow or the next day. As Naruto vanished in a black shunshin, he told the boy. Anko is stationed at the gate. Anko was waiting for Naruto to arrive so they could begin their mission to deliver supplies to a small town suffering from a drought. Naruto stepped through the gate in his black shunshin. I apologize for being late, Kakashi sensei. Again. As Anko nodded knowingly, Naruto said. Then there was the incident with Iruka sensei. Did he make any remarks about me? Anko inquired eagerly. No way, Naruto replied. You're dragging the cart, Anko pointed out to Naruto. Why? Naruto inquired. You are more powerful. Anko stated plainly. Chop chop, pullin'. Naruto grudgingly began pulling the cart as she spoke. Are you going to take the Chunin exam? Anko inquired as to how long she remembered the meeting. Begin with a flashback. The Hokage summoned all of the Junin senseis and Junin and Chunin proctors. Okay, everyone, you are all aware that the Chunin exams will be held in one week. Said Serutobi. Who will choose their teams? After Junin sensei nominated their teams, Serutobi inquired as Junin sensei. Team 7 is nominated for the Chunin exams by Kakashi Hitaki. Kakashi stated in a monotone tone. What? Anko screamed angrily. Are you aware that killing is permitted in the exam? Kurenai struggled to keep her back as Anko asked angrily. I'm sure your team isn't prepared. She exclaimed. I believe you would. Kakashi responded. I mean, you train alongside Naruto and Sakura. Kakashi elaborated. Because you abandoned them to teach that brat of a Uchiha. Anko screamed angrily, her curse mark ablaze with rage. You wouldn't understand because I am the only one who can tiak. Kakashi started. And who instructed you? As everyone's eyes widened, Anko inquired. Stop right now. Serutobi gave the order. Kakashi. I'll speak with you after the exams. He went on to say. End of flashback. I'm going to think about it. Naruto interjected Anko's flashback. Good. Anko expressed her suspicions. She noticed Naruto tensing. Do you sense them as well? Anko inquired of Naruto in sign language. He nodded almost imperceptibly. How many do you perceive? Anko inquired. I sense six. No, seven. Naruto responded by signing back. Two of the seven have Chunin level chakra reserves, while the remaining five have Genin or lower. Naruto informed her. They have a lot of guts to come after this card. Anko signed with a vicious smile. Uh oh. Naruto thought as the two Chunin jumped out in front of them and the other five jumped out behind them, hoping to snag the stuff without attracting the attention of Naruto and Anko. How about I take these two jerks and you take the other five? 
Anko inquired, cracking her knuckles. I was hoping for a way to express my rage towards Kakashi. She went on to say. Naruto gave her a shrug. Remember, Anko, they're wanted alive, so don't go too far. Naruto informed her. Okay, no deaths, but broken bones, gashes, and stabs are acceptable. As Naruto turned to face the five, Anko spoke up. I'll let you live if you leave now. Naruto stated icily. We have the upper hand in five verse one. Said one of the thugs. You meant to say had. Naruto said, motioning to the trees. It's now verse 5000. As the clones surrounded the thugs, Naruto smirked. Do you know who I am now? He asked as the clones parted ways to allow the real Naruto through. And no, stuttered the thug. You fools call me the Black Death of Konoha. Naruto said this as two of the thugs collapsed. The other three were too terrified to fall asleep. Now, should I kill you or not? Naruto said calmly as he approached the trembling men. Naruto slowly drew his katana, which caused the last three clones to flee, giving Naruto back his chakra. That was entertaining, Naruto said, looking up to see Anko sitting on top of the two chunin clapping at him. Way to go, Naruto-kun. Anko said as she stood up and stepped away from the two chunin. She's a H-E-A. The chunin couldn't finish because Anko's foot collided with his groin, causing him to pass out. As he created seven clones, Naruto shook his head. You know you're a bit of a loose cannon at times. Naruto told her as the clones led the men back to Konoha to face charges. Let's finish this mission together. Naruto informed her. Why must you train with Hanada-chan? Anko inquired, Naruto was relieved that his hood was up because his face was bright red. And no. Naruto stumbled. That's right. Anko stated that he did not believe him. You know I haven't met her yet. You know I need to meet her as your older sister. Anko elaborated. Oh my god. Naruto yelled. Do anything to her, and I'll tell Iruka sensei who sent him those pictures. So? Anko inquired. And I'm not going to tell him it's you. Naruto continued as Anko looked at him. Do we have an agreement? Naruto inquired. All right, but I still want to meet her. Naruto was informed by Anko. I want to make certain she is suitable for you, Anko elaborated. Although Kurenai-chan speaks highly of Hanada. I know Kurenai-chan is a great character judge, and she says Hanada is kind, gentle, and shy. Especially around Naruto. Anko pondered. Hmm. What embarrassing stories should I tell? Wondered Anko. Fine, Naruto replied. I think she's a little too good for me. Naruto reflected as he looked at Anko. They had completed the mission in two hours with two more incidents, but when the thugs saw Naruto, they fled. So, Naruto, what did you say to Kakashi when he arrived? Oh, I did tell him the truth. Naruto informed Anko. Before I left, he ditched Sakura and I, and Sakura ran up to me. It didn't take long for the two to return to Konoha. The next time we do this, I'm going to make clones to carry the damned cart. As he stretched his arms, Naruto told Anko. Why don't you just lock it up? Anko inquired. The seal required is extremely complex, and I don't want to waste my time on something that a few clones can accomplish. As they walked through Konoha, Naruto told Anko. Naruto noticed a flash of indigo. Hum, must be Hanada-chan, Naruto thought as he was tackled by a light figure straddling his back. Good day, Naruto-kun. Someone whispered into his ear, making him shiver. 
Who is this girl, Naruto? Anko inquired. This is Hanada, Anko ne chan. Hyuga Hanada. Naruto stood up, but Hanada remained clinging to him. Hanada, my name is Anko Mitarashi. Naruto stated. Hello, Hanada said behind Naruto's back. Oh, you're the infamous Hanada that Naruto always mentions. As Naruto blushed, Anko thanked Zabuza and Haku for providing him with a cloak to hide his blush. Really, Naruto-kun mentions me? Hanada inquired, as Anko nodded. Boss. Naruto overheard a young girl and boy screaming. Naruto turned to see Udon and Moegi, who appeared agitated. What exactly is it? Naruto inquired solemnly. Konohamaru-kun and Hanabi-chan, help! Moegi exclaimed as Hanada jumped off his back and the two flew towards the two children who had appeared. When they turned the corner, Hanabi and Konohamaru were lifted off the ground by their shirts. Naruto's rage reached new heights as his eyes turned red. He vanished along with Hanada, whose rage rivaled his. Naruto appeared behind the shinobi, clutching Hanabi and Konohamaru in his arms, his katana pressed tightly to his neck as Hanada cut off the chakra to his arms. Give them up. Naruto spoke dangerously as he pressed the blade against his neck. The shinobi let them go, and Naruto sheathed his katana. As the shinobi reached for the bundle on his back, Hanada grabbed her sister and Konohamaru and leapt back. Naruto-kun, he's carrying a puppet. Hanada issued a warning while her Byakugan was active. Perhaps I should turn it into firewood. Naruto said coldly as he gripped the katana's handle. Something grabbed onto his shin. Naruto pulsed his chakra, causing the chakra string to release him. Konkuro Tamari, stop right now or I'll kill you. A boy spoke up behind Naruto. Naruto had sensed the approaching person's presence. He has the same chakra flowing through him as Naruto-kun, Hanada observed. G Gara, yes. Konkuro stumbled as Naruto stood guard in front of the two. Can you tell me your name? Gara demanded, his gaze fixed on Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki is a manga character. Naruto informed Gara. We're going. Gara said as he and Konkuro walked away. Tamari, on the other hand, had stayed. So you're the Konoha Black Death? Tamari inquired as she walked seductively towards Naruto. That's what they call me. Naruto responded indifferently, clearly unfazed by her. Would you like to go? Tamari started when Hanada grabbed Naruto's arm. He'll do it like hell. Hanada said, her gaze fixed on Tamari. He's all mine. Hanada elaborated. Tamari gave Hanada a blank stare. Well, you can call me if you get tired of her. Tamari said this with a wink and a kiss to him. Do you want me, Hanada-chan? Naruto inquired, causing the girl to blush. Um, uh, I would like it if we were going out. Hanada expressed her concern. Please don't despise me. Hanada pondered. All right, Naruto said. Okay? Hanada asked, perplexed. We're free to go. Naruto said this as he noticed Hanada's biggest smile cross her face just before she tackled him to the ground. Again. Hanada's lips were pressed against Naruto's in a passionate kiss this time. Way to go, boss, Nei chan Hanabi and Konohamaru yelled. Hanada has been released. Naruto, Hanada was flushing profusely. Konohamaru. Naruto said as he turned to face the youngster. What did I say earlier? Naruto inquired, his gaze fixed on Konohamaru. You promised to play shinobi with us, so don't go outside. Konohamaru explained. 
And now that Hanada Nei Chan has arrived, she can play as well. Konohamaru sheepishly added. Naruto rubbed his eyes before headbutting Konohamaru. Fine, Naruto replied. But you'll have to track us down. Naruto said as he wrapped his arm around Hanada's waist, making her blush, before disappearing in Naruto's black shunshin. Other places. In a clearing, Naruto and Hanada appeared. A river and waterfall were not far away. When Naruto took Hanada in his shunshin, she was dizzy as usual. She looked around when her vision cleared. Beautiful. Hanada spoke in hushed tones. It's the second most beautiful thing I've ever seen. As Hanada looked at him, Naruto said. You are the pioneer. As he wrapped his arms around the blushing girl's waist, Naruto whispered to her. You are aware that we have the next week off. Naruto stated. How about we go on a date? Suggested Naruto. That's something I'd like. Hanada exclaimed excitedly. I finally get to meet Naruto-kun. My Naruto-kun. Hanada pondered as she kissed him on the lips. Where do you want to go? Naruto inquired. I don't mind. As long as I'm with you. Hanada said with a small smile to Naruto. Okay. As he created a clone that vanished in the shunshin, Naruto said. Let's have dinner here. Naruto said as he removed his cloak, revealing surprisingly tanned skin and broad shoulders. He was dressed in a shirt that clung to his muscles, making Hanada blush. Oh, Naruto-kun is so. Hanada's mind wandered. She couldn't think of a proper name for Naruto. Hanada. I have something to tell you. Naruto informed Hanada. It's one of the reasons why some of the villagers despise me. Naruto elaborated. I'm not interested in that. Hanada was adamant. Hanada. This is something you should be aware of if we do start dating. Naruto informed her. I made a promise to your father. Naruto elaborated. Do you remember what happened 13 years ago on October 10th? Naruto inquired, and Hanada nodded. When Kyuubi attacked the village, the fourth Hokage gave his life to eliminate Kyuubi. Naruto was informed by Hanada. Well, that's not entirely correct. Naruto informed Hanada. Kyuubi will die eventually, but she isn't dead yet. Naruto elaborated. The tailed beasts, you see, are far too powerful for a human to defeat. They can be sealed into objects or people depending on the number of tails. Naruto explained everything to Hanada. Tails 1 through 4 can be sealed into objects or people of any kind. Only people aged 10 and under can be sealed with 4 and 5 tails. They must seal 6 to 9 tails into newborn babies. As he lifted his shirt, Naruto told Hanada. The fourth Hokage sealed the Kyuubi's chakra and spirit into me using a combination of the dead demon consuming seal and the 8 trigrams seal. Hanada gasped when Naruto told her the news. I understand if you despise me. Naruto was interrupted by his own two soft lips. I don't care if you've got QB sealed inside you. Hanada spoke quietly to Naruto. You are Naruto-kun, and no one else is QB. Hanada informed her. You aren't a demon. As her thumb ran over Naruto's whisker marks, Hanada said. Are these the result of QB's influence? First and foremost, QB is not a demon. Naruto started. She is the boss Kitsune of the Kitsune summoning clan, the summons rulers. Naruto informed Hanada. And these whisker marks are, in some ways, a result of Kyuubi's influence on me. But not from the ceiling, but rather from my time in my mother's womb. Naruto informed Hanada. My mother was Kyuubi no Kitsune's previous Jinchuriki. 
Naruto informed Hanada, who gasped once more. In that sense, I am a Kitsune. Naruto informed her as the clone returned with food. Naruto and Hanada became even more inseparable after their first date. They now spent the majority of their free time after team training together. The main difference was that instead of walking next to each other, they now held hands. Naruto went to bed alone the night before, but when he awoke, he felt a light weight on his left arm. Who is he? When Naruto opened his eyes, he saw two lavender orbs staring into his cerulean orbs. Good morning, Naru-kun, Hanada said as she kissed him on the lips. Naruto returned her kiss with zeal. Hello Hinaheim, Naruto said as he stepped back from her. When did you arrive? Naruto inquired. About ten last night, Hanada replied. Do you want me dead? Naruto perplexed Hanada, who tilted her head to the side. Your father, Naruto explained. He will kill me if he finds out we slept together, Naruto said, as Hanada blushed at what Naruto had said. Naruto noticed her blush and distant expression and realized what he had said. Oh, is my little Hinaheim a pervert? Naruto inquired, his face flushed. Only with you, Naru-kun, Hanada said into his ear, causing him to blush and shudder. Is my Naru-kun a pervert as well? Hanada wondered. Only for you, my Haim, Naruto said as she kissed him once more. Naruto looked at the time as they drew away. Oh no, Hinaheim, we have to go, Naruto said as Hanada's eyes widened as she looked at the clock. Ah! exclaimed she. I only have ten minutes before I have to meet with my team, she explained to Naruto. She jumped to her feet, revealing a light blue nightgown that made Naruto blush. She went into his bathroom right away and changed her clothes in less than a minute. Her clothes were a shambles as she kissed Naruto quickly. Bye Naru-kun, I'll see you later, Hanada said before leaping out the window and heading for the training grounds. I need to take a shower, Naruto thought as he got out of bed, his thoughts returning to Hanada's nightgown. He was dressed in pajama pants and no shirt. Then he heard a knock on the door. Who might that be? Naruto thought as he put on his cloak and answered the door. He noticed a six-foot-two man with long black hair and pale eyes staring at him. Naruto gulped as he saw Hiyashi Hyuga in front of him. H hello, H Hiyashi sama, Naruto mumbled. Good day, Naruto-san, Hiyashi said. P please come in, Naruto said, moving to the side to make room for the larger man. What can I do for you? Naruto inquired, holding up a bag of clothes. I know Hanada slept here the night before, Hiyashi explained. I know that now that you two are dating, this will happen more frequently, Hiyashi said as he held the bag towards Naruto. These are some of her clothes that you should keep here for when she sleeps over, Naruto said, his nerves almost gone. But if I find out what you two were up to, I will make sure you never mold chakra again, he threatened, as Naruto's nervousness returned tenfold. Naruto stuttered as he carried the bag into his room. I, I promise not to do anything to her that she does not want, Naruto said to Hiyashi. You two remind me of a couple of people, Hiyashi observed. Who? Naruto inquired. Your parents, Hiyashi explained. You remind me a lot of Kashina and your father. Kashina was a free spirit who never broke her word, she loved pranks, and she loved ramen, Hiyashi told Naruto. Your father was a compassionate person, he loved everyone, he cried for anyone he killed, and he loved his wife. I am sure you and Hanada will be just like them, Hiyashi said. However, you'll have to tell her about it, Hiyashi added. She already knows, Naruto explained to Hiyashi. We hadn't even gone on our first date when I told her, Naruto added as Hiyashi nodded in agreement. You are a wonderful man, Naruto, Hiyashi said. Thank you, 
Naruto said, bowing to Hiyashi. Thank you for informing me about my mother and father as well, Naruto added. There's no need to thank me, Hiyashi said. But I'm sorry, Naruto Uzumaki, Hiyashi said, bowing his head in front of Naruto. Not many people know who your father is, and adopting you would have raised a lot of suspicion. I couldn't do it without a reason, Hiyashi explained. I did everything I could to keep you safe. I already know that, Naruto explained to Hiyashi. I'm sure if you hadn't protected me, I'd have turned cold and distant, Naruto continued. I'm sure, Hiyashi replied. You should get ready for the exam, which begins in an hour, Hiyashi advised. I'll let myself out, Hiyashi said as he nodded and went to the bathroom to change his clothes under his cloak, but he forgot something. He was already out the door and on his way to school when he realized what he had missed. He was surprised that he had forgotten about this piece of clothing. He didn't have to wait long before Sakura arrived. Good day, Naruto, Sakura said. Good morning, Sakura, Naruto said. I'm glad you decided to take the exam, Naruto said. I'm a little nervous, Sakura confessed. You said killing was legal. What will I do? She wondered. You will do what you have to, Sakura, Naruto said. And I will do everything I can to protect you, Naruto added. Thank you, Naruto, Sakura stated. No problem, Naruto said, breaking the comfortable silence. They had to wait another 20 minutes before Sasuke arrived. Don't slow me down, Sasuke said as he walked into the school. He's going to kill himself, one of us, or both of us, Naruto said simply as Sakura nodded. They followed Sasuke into the school. Did you work on that genjutsu I gave you, Sakura? Naruto inquired as she nodded. I haven't gotten it right yet, Sakura admitted. How about the earth jutsu I gave you? Naruto inquired. I can do the field spike jutsu. But I don't have enough chakra to do the others, Sakura explained to Naruto. I figured so, Naruto said. How about you? Sakura inquired. Hum, I've been working on that wind jutsu I'm developing, Naruto explained to Sakura. I'm almost finished, Naruto added. All I need to do is add chakra manipulation to perfect it, but it's been impossible for me so far, Naruto explained. I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually, Sakura said as they reached the second floor. Naruto noticed a boy pleading to be let in. Hey, you're all losers if you can't tell this is a genjutsu, Sasuke said, his two teammates staring at him as if he were stupid. Naruto smacked his palm against his brow. And how did you win Rookie of the Year? Naruto sarcastically inquired. Do you realize you've increased our competition? Naruto asked dryly as he made his way through the crowd. The Konoha shinobi who recognized Naruto took a step back. Sakura trailed Naruto as they walked. Naruto came to a halt and grabbed a foot that was barely an inch away from Sasuke's head. I'd appreciate it if you didn't attack my teammate, even though I was tempted to do what you just tried, Naruto said as he let the boy who was begging go. Oh, and the next time you want to fool someone, put a genjutsu on the Hyuga's eyes. I knew he had the Byakugan right away, Naruto added. Let's go, Naruto said, walking away. They didn't get far before the strange boy reappeared. I'm Rock Lee, and I challenge you to a do. He trailed off as he looked at Sakura. Naruto noticed Lee in front of Sakura. Are you Sakura Haruno? Lee inquired, to which Sakura nodded. You are so lovely, will you go out with me? Lee inquired. I swear I'll always protect you. I'm sorry, Lee, but I'm not interested in dating at the moment, Sakura explained. Okay, Lee said, slightly disappointed, making Sakura feel guilty. How about we go get some lunch sometime and get to know each other better? 
Sakura suggested, as Lee happily nodded. Lee shook his head and recalled why he had come. Oh yes, I am here to challenge Sasuke Uchiha to a duel, Lee said, turning to Naruto. As Lee looked at Naruto, he wasn't paying attention. Oh, you were talking to me? Naruto inquired, his voice bored. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said, bowing to Lee. I wonder if all of Kakashi Sensei's students are this interesting. Lee reflected, anime tears streaming down his cheeks as Naruto and Sakura sweated. I thought you wanted to fight me! exclaimed Sasuke. Do you know what I'm in the mood for? Watching Sasuke get his ass handed to him, Naruto smirked. Like this loser will beat me, Sasuke said as the two walked away from each other. Naruto and Sakura stood there watching Sasuke get kicked around in front of them. Hum, and to think he's holding back, Naruto remarked as they watched Lee remove the bandages from his hands. Naruto noticed the bruises and scars on his fists. Naruto tensed visibly as he observed Lee's actions. This is over, Naruto said as Lee kicked Sasuke into the air and then leapt up after him. The bandages wrapped around Sasuke, but a spin wheel launched through the air and hit the bandages, leaving Lee dangling. What did you mean by he was holding back, Naruto? Sakura inquired. Naruto informed her that Lee was wearing weights. He was using the Iron Fist stance, which is the only stance that uses the eight celestial gates to augment their attacks, and the attack Lee was about to use on Sasuke opens the first gate, Naruto explained as they stood in front of a massive turtle. It is said that if a civilian opens all eight gates, they will become as strong as or stronger than the Hokage, Naruto explained as they watched a man resembling Lee appear on its back. But opening the gates has consequences. You will rip muscles, break bones, tear ligaments, and die when you open the last gate, Naruto explained to Sakura. But there is one way to survive, Naruto explained, opening the gate of death. Only one person every 200 years is born with the ninth fabled gate, the gate of resurrection. It changes all the chakra you gain from releasing the eight gates into healing chakra, healing the body of all damage, Naruto explained to Sakura as they watched the man punch Lee, hug him, and a sunset appeared behind them. Sakura is that a. He trailed off as Sakura attempted but failed to release the genjutsu. Hurry, it's being burned into my memory. Naruto exclaimed as Sakura tried again with their eyes closed. I can't release it. Exclaimed Sakura. That was frightening, Naruto said as Sakura nodded. I apologize for my students' rudeness, Naruto Uzumaki, said the older man. Hmm, you say something? Naruto inquired as anime tears streamed down the man's face. His students are also cool. Thought the man. I am Might Guy, Guy explained to Naruto. Ah, the green beast of Konoha, Naruto explained. And you'd be the black death of Konoha, Guy explained. Well, I guess I'll have to drag my teammate to the first exam, Naruto said as he approached the downed Uchiha and roughly lifted him up. I hope you've realized by now that there are people who can kick the crap out of you, Naruto said to the Uchiha. And they don't give a damn about your surname. Shut up, said Sasuke. Naruto Uzumaki, you will always be my eternal rival. Exclaimed Lee. Okay. Naruto said, puzzled, as he walked away, Naruto on his shoulder and Sakura close behind him. What exactly is an eternal rival? Naruto inquired, as Sakura shrugged. I have no idea, Sakura admitted. Perhaps Kakashi knows, Sakura said as they approached two large double doors where Kakashi had appeared in front of them. I'm glad you three decided to take the exam, Kakashi said. What became of Sasuke? He inquired. He fought Rock Lee, Naruto explained to Kakashi. Do you know what an eternal rival is? Naruto inquired. Oh my god, 
Please tell me none of you accepted the offer, Kakashi exclaimed. I did, Naruto admitted as Kakashi sighed. You'll find out soon, Kakashi said to Naruto. Good luck, you three, Kakashi said as the three entered the room, which was filled with hundreds of genin. As he saw all the genin, Naruto whistled. Wow! That's a lot of genin, Naruto commented as Sakura nodded. Naruto looked around and noticed that his friends and girlfriend were not far away. Naruto directed his team's attention to them. Kiba was causing Hanada grief. Just one date, Hanada-chan, Kiba said. I've already said no, Hanada stated flatly. Come on, you're not seeing anyone, Kiba said. Actually, I am, Hanada said, shocking everyone. Right Naruto-kun? Hanada asked, approaching him as he placed Sasuke on the ground. Yes, Naruto replied. But you know how much I despise you wearing that cloak indoors, Hanada reprimanded as she went to untie it. I don't think that's a good idea, Naruto cautioned, but Hanada ignored him and untied the cloak and pulled the hood back to reveal long blonde hair tied in a ponytail, two locks of hair framing his face, his hair spikier. Holy sh asterisk t, when did Naruto turn into a hunk? Exclaimed Ino as Sakura just stared. I don't recommend taking my cloak off Hinaheim, Naruto warned, but she ignored him and removed his cloak, revealing that he didn't have a shirt underneath. His chest was toned and muscled. As girls approached him, the two heard squeals and thuds. Hanada turned and passionately kissed Naruto, shocking their friends and making Naruto's new fangirls groan. Hum, who knew I had so many fangirls? Naruto remarked as Hanada resisted the kiss. More than you think, mumbled Hanada. How do you know? Asked Naruto. I was the president, Hanada mumbled, blushing slightly. I was wondering when you'd say you're dating Naruto Uzumaki, Shino said emotionlessly. How did you find out? Naruto inquired. My bugs could smell your scent on her, Shino replied, making the two blush at the implied insinuation. What have you done with Hanada-chan, Naruto? Sakura asked dangerously. Nothing. Exclaimed Naruto. Well, we did sleep together last night, Hanada replied, blushing when she realized what she had said. All we did, I swear. She exclaimed. Naruto, Sakura said perilously. Two arms wrapped around Naruto's chest. Tamari had latched onto Naruto when he turned his head. Hello, handsome, Tamari said, smiling. Why me? Hanada turned to stare at Tamari, Naruto thought. Let him go, Hanada said dangerously, and all her friends, including Naruto, were taken aback when they sensed a subtle and massive killer intent leaking from Hanada. He is mine and no one else's, she declared perilously. Naruto escaped Temari's grasp and moved behind Hanada. I must admit, Naruto does look delicious, and if he wasn't already taken, I would definitely go for him, Naruto overheard Ino say to Sakura. What's the matter with me? Naruto reflected to himself. Might be another side effect of our complete merger, QB explained to Naruto. Oh joy, mumbled Naruto as Hanada snuggled into his chest and Tamari stomped away. What occurred? Naruto pondered. Hanada-chan said something about you being her husband, QB responded as Naruto blushed. Okay you like birds, stop the show. Yelled a man from the front, capturing the attention of the entire genin. Hey, Ibiki, Naruto said calmly as the man unleashed his murderous intent. The killer intent had no effect on Naruto. Naruto. Growled Ibiki. All right, everyone take a seat, he said. Ya yeah, ya, yeah, no need to unleash that killer intent, Naruto said as he and Hanada approached several empty seats. Girls sat around the two, staring dreamily at Naruto. Okay, 
Stop star. He trailed off as Hanada and Naruto vanished in two puffs of smoke, leaving Sakura and Ino to sit where the two had been. How did we get here? Ino wondered. Naruto's shunshin, Sakura explained, groaning. He has the ability to teleport anyone he wants, Sakura explained. The girls turned to see Naruto sitting in the back. They went to take a seat. Once seated, you cannot move, he explained to the girls. Ibiki glared at Naruto for causing such a commotion. There's no need to glare at me, Ibiki-chan, Naruto mocked, earning a very vicious glare as Chunin handed out the exams. Naruto returned Ibiki's lethal stare with his own emotionless stare. Perhaps I should fail you right now, Ibiki threatened. I don't care if it means I don't have to see your ugly mug, Naruto said. Elsewhere. I don't care if it means I don't have to see your ugly mug, Naruto told the head of Anbu interrogation, as heard by a group of Junin and the Hokage. Wow. Naruto-kun has guts, Kuranai observed from her vantage point next to Asuma. I think he wants to die, Asuma remarked. Oh, I'm sure Naruto-kun has something on him, Kuranai confided in her crush. What do you mean? Asuma inquired as everyone in the room focused on Kuranai. Naruto-kun has enough information on everyone in the Shinobi program that he could blackmail anyone he wants into doing whatever he wants, Kuranai shocked everyone. Fortunately for me, I am close to Hanada-chan and Naruto-kun, so I should be safe, along with Anko-chan and Aruka-kun, and, of course, Hanada-chan. How about me? Kakashi inquired as Kuranai glared at him. Oh, you think you'll be an exception because you're his sensei? Kuranai sneered. What's your problem? Kakashi asked as he put his book away. Oh, I find it kind of funny that myself and Anko-chan were treating the two like students rather than troubled teenagers, Kuranai sneered at the older Junin. I understand how you abandoned your students. Only I can teach Sasuke how to use his Sharingan, Kakashi insisted. I still think Anko-chan made a point when she asked who taught you how to use the Sharingan, Kuranai said, her gaze fixed on the white-haired Junin. You wouldn't understand, Kakashi explained as he walked away. Did the fourth Hokage. Your sensei pick favorites? Kuanai inquired as Kakashi appeared in front of Kuranai, glaring and exuding a great deal of killer intent. Don't talk about my sensei, Kakashi warned. I'll talk about whoever I want, Kuranai replied. Does Minato Namikaze, our fourth Hokage, pick favorites? Kuranai demanded angrily. This is not over until I say so. Yelled Hiruzen, silencing the two Junin. Any further mention of this subject during the Chunin exams will result in severe punishment, he warned dangerously. Area of Examination The exam had begun, and Naruto took a quick glance at the test before setting it down, noticing that it was impossible to pass if you weren't exceptionally bright. It didn't take long for him to notice that many people were cheating. He also witnessed people being ejected for cheating. Naruto contemplated the exam for 15 minutes. He smirked deviously, making Hanada, who could see him with her Byakugan active and hidden by a simple genjutsu, nervous as she saw him writing a few notes and turning the paper upside down. Naruto had pushed his chakra into the paper, making it impossible for her to read what he said. Ibiki noticed Naruto jotted down some quick responses before flipping the page over. What is he up to? Ibiki reflected to himself. Ibiki and Naruto were having a staring contest. Well, Ibiki was glaring and Naruto was staring back blankly. It was now 15 minutes until the exam's end, and neither Ibiki nor Naruto had blinked. I believe it is time for the 10th question, Naruto continued to stare. There are still 5 minutes left, Ibiki grumbled. So there is, Naruto replied calmly. Everyone was waiting to see who would win the staring contest. Alright, 
Since everyone is supposed to be finished, I'll tell you about the tenth question and the various rules it has, Ibiki said, turning to face the group of Genin. Unlike the other questions, you can leave now and return later. Why would we want to do that? Yelled Kiba Inazuka angrily. Because if you don't get the tenth question correct, you'll get a zero and be kicked out of the exam, Ibiki said sadistically. And if you stay and get the question wrong, you will be barred from ever taking the Chunin exams and will be doomed to be a Genin for life, Ibiki said as several people began to panic. Ibiki turned around to see Naruto staring back with the same expression he had throughout the exam. Several teams could be seen leaving. When he saw Naruto's hand begin to rise, he smirked. That smirk vanished when Naruto slammed it into the desk, nearly breaking it in half, and stood up. I don't care if I am a genin for life, I will still find a way to be the best Hokage ever. Naruto yelled, simultaneously intimidating and stealing everyone. After Naruto demonstrated his strength, two more teams rose and fled, fearful of pursuing Naruto's team. Because of Naruto, the rest stayed. Is this how you want it? If you're wrong, you'll be a genin, Ibiki warned, as no one stood up. Well, all I have to say is you. He trailed off as something with a banner flew through the window. Sexiest Kunoichi alive, they say. Oh god no, Naruto said, sinking into his seat and attempting to vanish. You all pass, Anko said, sadistically smiling. You're early, Anko, Ibiki observed. My name is Anko Mitarashi, and I am the examiner for the second exam, Anko stated, ignoring Ibiki. Now if you follow me to the next exam location, she said, looking at the assembled genin. Wow, Ibiki 30 teams, you're going soft, Anko said as Ibiki smirked. Well, it's that brat's fault, Ibiki said, pointing to Naruto. Oh Naru-chan! exclaimed Anko upon seeing Naruto. Naruto flushed with shame. Come here, Naru-chan, and properly greet me, she said to Naruto. Naruto remained motionless. I said greet me properly. She exclaimed as Naruto sank even lower as people began to laugh and chuckle. She began to walk towards Naruto and grabbed his ear, causing him to yelp in pain. Everyone looked on as Anko chastised Naruto. Ibiki sat back and took in the scenery. Those photos are going public, Ibiki. Naruto yelled before Anko tugged again. Elsewhere. Photos? Everyone looking through the crystal ball asked at the same time. Exam. I think it's time for the second exam, Anko, Ibiki said. Hum? Oh yes, everyone follow me, Anko said as she began dragging Naruto away, while several people laughed. Everyone was on a training ground surrounded by fences. This is training ground 44, and it is regarded as the most dangerous training ground in Konoha. As a loud roar echoed, Anko said. This is referred to as the forest of death. She also mentioned scaring the kids. Stop scaring the children and take my ear. Naruto yelled as she yanked once more, causing him to yelp in pain. I'll need everyone to sign the waivers. Anko spoke as a chunin began to pass a piece of paper to each genin. Basically, it says that if you die in there, the village of Konoha is not to blame. Anko concluded cheerfully. You're insane. Ow. As Anko yanked again, Naruto yelled. You're going to rip off my damn ear. Naruto exclaimed as she yanked on his ear once more. Naruto language. Kun's Anko cautioned him as she drew him away from the other genin. I want you to listen to me, Naruto. She stated solemnly. I know you're strong, but don't overestimate yourself. There are elements within that can and will kill you, she forewarned. All right, Nei Chan. Before wrapping his arms around the woman, Naruto told Anko. 
When he drew back, he wrapped the cloak around his shoulders, and his face vanished into shadows, leaving only his two cerulean blue eyes to shine. I'll be careful, Naruto said. You should be. Anko told Naruto as she tried again to grab his ear, but he dodged her. This is not going to happen again. Naruto said this as he walked back to the genin, rubbing his ear. You're a crazy woman. Naruto mumbled as he narrowly avoided a kanai attack. I heard you say that. Anko made a chirp. You'd think she wasn't my sister figure, wouldn't you? Naruto mumbled as he easily avoided a kanai attack. Ha! Huh. He exclaimed as he avoided another kanai. After numerous failed attempts to make Naruto bleed, Anko surrendered and turned to the genin. If you want to pass the exam, you must go to a tower in the middle of the forest with your team. You'll also need the Heaven Scroll and the Earth Scroll. This will cut the number of contestants for the final exam in half, she informed them. And if you open the scroll before you get to the tower. Well, let's just say you don't want to do that, she smirked. Naruto looked at her and shook his head. Now go get your scrolls and head to a gate. They will be released as I go, she informed everyone. Naruto nodded to Sakura who nodded back and followed Naruto to the location where they were randomly passing out scrolls. They walked away from the empty gate. Naruto took cover behind a tree. What are you doing, Naruto? Sakura inquired. I'm not sure what she's done, but I'm sure it's significant. Naruto forewarned. I know something will happen when she starts this exam, I predict. Naruto also stated Sakura nodded and crept up beside Naruto. Sasuke scoffed and moved closer to the gate. Suit yourself, Naruto said, covering his ears as Anko yelled, begin. After hearing 21 consecutive explosions, Sakura and Naruto saw Sasuke fly through the air next to them and slam into the tree. I attempted to warn you. Naruto informed the boy as he approached him that he was unconscious. What will we do, Naruto? Sakura inquired, her gaze fixed on Sasuke. Hum, as he examined Sasuke for injuries, Naruto said. Don't worry, he just bumped his head. As he slapped Sasuke awake, Naruto said. Sasuke, wake up. Naruto slapped Sasuke again and again until his cheeks burned. Ah! Why are my cheeks hurting? He yelled angrily. I'm not sure. Naruto's words made Sakura laugh. In any case, let's get moving. Naruto jumped through the gate, Sakura close behind. Sasuke lingered behind, rubbing his cheek, before following the two with a scowl. After two hours. They jumped for two hours straight, as fast as Sasuke could. Two hours until dark, Naruto thought as he came to a halt next to Sakura. We'll spend the night here, Naruto said. What do you mean tired? Sasuke laughed. No, I have enough energy to train for about seven days without stopping. Naruto stated. But if we hadn't had to slow down because of someone, we would have made more progress. As Sasuke stared at Sakura, Naruto said. Wrong guy, Sasuke. Naruto stated unequivocally to Sasuke. We could have gone faster, but you wouldn't have been able to keep up. As Sasuke glared at him with the Sharingan active, Naruto added. Is that supposed to frighten me? Naruto inquired as his eyes turned red and slitted, his whisker marks grew deeper, his teeth grew and became pointed, and his fingernails grew and became pointed. You are not the only one who possesses a dujutsu, Naruto said as his eyes returned to normal. Sakura erected a tent. Naruto gave the order. I'll go get some wood, and Sasuke can start a fire. Naruto stated. How come I start the fire? 
Because he was ordered to do something, Sasuke demanded angrily. I'm not sure, perhaps because Sakura is an earth user and I am a windwater user. Naruto remarked wryly. Shadow clone jutsu means shadow clone jutsu. Naruto explained that after he crossed his fingers and created 20 clones, they split up and went in search of dry wood. Sasuke looked into the woods, where the real Naruto had gone. What a jerk. Sasuke mumbled. Earth style. Descend area. As the earth shuddered, Sakura exclaimed. When Sasuke looked at Sakura, he noticed the earth beneath her sinking and walls forming around her. Hum, this should be deep enough, she thought as she repeated the jutsu and created a fire pit. How did you learn that? Sasuke inquired. Naruto gave me this scroll with this written on it. Sakura explained as the first set of Naruto returned with a large amount of wood and puffed away. This continued until they had a large amount of wood, but the real Naruto hadn't returned, despite the fact that it had been about two hours since he made the clones. Where has Naruto gone? Sakura inquired, concerned. As if I care? As he sat next to the fire he had started, Sasuke inquired. Sakura fixed her gaze on Uchiha. By the way, do you know any other jutsu? If they are strong enough, I might go on a date with you. Sasuke elaborated. She wouldn't pass up this opportunity, Sasuke reasoned. Like I'd tell you. Sakura fired back, infuriating the boy. I wouldn't mind if you offered me a date if I had to buy one with jutsus. Sakura continued as she approached her tent and placed a seal on it. I'm going to search for Naruto. Sakura said as she walked out of the room she had created. She walked out, her vision blurred. This will be difficult. His cloak is also black. Sakura pondered this while waiting for her eyes to adjust to the darkness. She began to walk slowly in the direction Naruto had gone. She walked for about 30 minutes before coming across Naruto fighting a girl with his katana. You're a good QB brat, the girl said as she swung her sword at Naruto, who parried it. Perhaps I should take your katana. She added as Naruto jabbed his katana. You could wield this like hell. Naruto responded by snapping his katana back to deflect an attack aimed at his chest. Naruto jumped back. Tell me, you have to be at least Junin level to compete with me, Naruto stated. Perhaps I'm just a really good genin, the girl replied. I seriously doubt it. Naruto said as his arms began to blur, leaving red streaks where they went. Unfortunately, I must depart. Before sinking into the ground, the girl said. Naruto muttered as he turned to face Sakura. What are you doing here, Sakura? As he looked at her, Naruto demanded. She was too preoccupied with the battleground in front of her. I came to find you. Sakura stated as she examined the damage. Please return. Naruto said as he walked past her, sheathing his katana. She noticed his blood-red, slitted eyes. Do you have a keke Jenke, Naruto? Sakura inquired. Of sorts, I suppose. As she followed him back to the encampment, Naruto said. We'll leave at sunrise. Naruto said as his eyes returned to blue. The following morning at 5 a.m. Naruto had spent the entire night waiting for the grass shinobi to reappear. Naruto was certain that the shinobi would return sooner or later, and he knew it would be sooner. Who or what is that person? As he gazed at the dying fire, Naruto reflected. Naruto made a hand sign and pointed his finger at the fire, indicating that it needed to be doused with water. There aren't many people who can beat me. Naruto thought again as he walked over to the tent that Naruto had sealed to keep Sasuke out. His reasoning was that he didn't trust him alone in the tent with Sakura. 
This infuriated the Uchiha. Naruto swung his fist at the tent. It's time for Sakura to wake up. He said this as he walked over to Sasuke and kicked his foot awake. It's time to wake up, Naruto said, looking at the sun just breaking over the horizon. We have about 17 hours until nightfall, Naruto calculated. We'll make an attempt to obtain the scroll today. Naruto stated. Does anyone have a strategy? As Sakura walked out, Naruto inquired. We find someone, beat them up, and steal their scroll. Arrogantly, Sasuke stated. Sakura and Naruto both looked at him. Are there any good plans? Naruto inquired, inadvertently insulting the Uchiha boy. We could lay traps. Sakura proposed. We could use the creatures of the forest against people. Sakura elaborated. That's a good idea. Naruto spoke up when he heard something. Shaw. Naruto muttered as he vanished into the darkness. He reappeared outside the structure Sakura had constructed. He was completely hidden from view in the shadows. He noticed five rain shinobi squads closing in on them. Naruto disappeared from his world and reappeared in the structure. Five squadrons are closing in on us. Naruto spoke to them in hushed tones. We'll prepare an ambush for them. Naruto whispered again as Sakura nodded as Naruto moved between her and Sasuke to allow her to make a few hand signs without Sasuke copying them. She placed her hand on the ground, and the three began to sink into it. Naruto had created three clones, two of whom became Sasuke and Sakura. The Sakura clone entered the tent while the Naruto and Sasuke clones appeared to be sleeping. Naruto nodded to Sakura, and she pressed her other hand against the ground, causing two of the walls to expand and curve backwards. Sakura nodded and crossed his fingers at Naruto. Shadow clone jutsu means shadow clone jutsu. Naruto murmured quietly as he created clones that filled the tunnel Sakura had created with his clones. Naruto closed his eyes and placed one hand on each wall. He could feel the vibrations coming from the shinobi's feet. All fifteen shinobi were inside the structure, sneaking up on the clones. Naruto removed his hand from the wall behind them, held it up, and took one finger down at a time. Sakura quickly turned the ceiling to dust once he had a fist, and Naruto's clones launched out and attacked the rain shinobi. Sakura proceeded through the chaos, knocking out any rain shinobi who stood in her way. All of the shinobi were knocked out and tied up in a matter of minutes. Naruto and Sakura were looking for the scrolls when they noticed that each squad had both scrolls. What made them attack us? Sakura inquired. To eliminate some of the competition. As he pocketed all the scrolls, Naruto told her. Come on. Let's get started. As he dispersed the clones and stood straight, Naruto said. Our fight certainly drew a lot of attention, and we're in danger. Are you afraid of a few shinobi? Sasuke inquired arrogantly. All right, let's go with that. Naruto stated somewhat nervously. They could hear a howling approaching them. All right, let's go. Naruto exclaimed, leaping away, Sakura close behind. What was that, Naruto? Sakura inquired. I'm not sure, and I don't want to know. Naruto said, his gaze darting around. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew their way. Naruto slashed the weak wind attack in half with his hands in front of him. Naruto looked around, and his gaze returned to the grass shinobi. I was wondering when you'd return. Naruto said coldly, his gaze fixed on the woman. The girl's killer intent was incredible, but it didn't bother Naruto in the least. Naruto began to unleash his own killer intent, which defeated the girl's killer intent. What exactly do you want? Naruto inquired, his hand on his katana. 
Kukuku, Naruto-kun, I just came to see Sasuke-kun. As Naruto became defensive, the girl said. Naruto's eyes narrowed before he charged forward with his katana, attacking the grass shinobi. Naruto began to dodge and block the shinobi's attacks. But Naruto sensed that the shinobi was teasing him. How am I going to proceed? Naruto pondered as the girl smirked. Oh well, when you tap into its chakra, the seal becomes visible. Naruto was shocked enough, according to the grass shinobi. Five elemental seal! exclaimed the girl as she slammed her hand into Naruto's stomach, causing him to cough up blood and collapse unconscious on the ground. Sakura and Sasuke were taken aback as the shinobi turned and smirked viciously at them. Well, Sasuke-kun. She said before launching an attack on him. With his Sharingan active, Sasuke couldn't track the shinobi's movements. He was suddenly hurling himself against the wall. If this is what the elite Uchiha clan has been reduced to, I am saddened. The girl said something that made Sasuke angry, which made the girl smirk. All right, just a little more rage and I can put that seal on him. The girl pondered. Perhaps I should wake up Naruto-kun and fight him again. He did much better last night. The girl added, and she got what she wanted, the Uchiha boy was filled with murderous intent. She smirked, and her neck grew and shot toward Sasuke. Her teeth were about to sink into Sasuke's neck when she was stopped by a katana. Don't. Think. I'm leaving. Naruto exclaimed as he aimed for the shinobi's long neck. Oh ho, you're quite feisty, but you're a weakling with your secondary chakra sealed away. The shinobi said this as she slammed her fist into Naruto's stomach, causing him to cough up blood again, but this time he didn't pass out. So she kicked the side of Naruto's head, launching him head first into a tree. Naruto was knocked out cold. Now that he's out of the way, Sasuke-kun, it's time for you. As she released even more killer intent, the shinobi froze in the two in place. The shinobi extended her neck and sank her fangs into Sasuke's neck, forcing her tainted chakra into his neck and forming a seal. I'm done now. As the girl sank into the ground, Sasuke collapsed unconscious. Sakura stood between Naruto and Sasuke, stunned that Naruto had been defeated so easily. She shook her head and began dragging Naruto towards a tree whose roots were partially above ground, creating a shelter that was hidden from view. She dragged Sasuke beneath it as well, noticing the strange mark on his neck. I'm going to have to set traps for anyone who attacks us. She pondered this as she began to lay out paper bombs and smoke bombs, as well as genjutsu traps that would lead the shinobi away from them. After 20 hours. It had been 20 hours since the fight, and neither of the two boys had even awoken. Naruto tossed and turned, but that was it. He'd occasionally grab his stomach and scream in agony. Sakura drew his shirt up, revealing a slightly glowing seal beneath it. What exactly is this seal? Sakura paused before Naruto snatched her wrist from his slumber. She had to use a lot of strength to get her wrist free from his grasp. She noticed a squirrel about to detonate one of her explosive tags as she looked out across the clearing in front of the natural shelter. Sakura, thinking quickly, threw a kanai right in front of the squirrel, scaring it and causing it to flee. Sakura breathed a sigh of relief, but it was short-lived as three shinobi landed in front of the shelter and approached Sakura. Oh no, what do I do? She wondered. She hadn't slept in 20 hours and was exhausted. As she walked out of the shelter and stood at the entrance, the shinobi approached her. What exactly do you want? Sakura insisted. Well, our master instructed us to assassinate Sasuke. With a smirk, the guy with bandages said. May I have this girl? The other man stated. 
It's been a while since I had some fun. He said this as his gaze wandered over Sakura's body. You are so. So. The female member of the group was unable to find the correct word. Allow me to take her. I haven't had a good fight in a long time. The girl went on to say. Kin beat this girl quickly. As he looked at them, the bandaged man said. Can't I have some fun? With a maniacal grin, she inquired. I enjoy defeating want Tobi Kunoichi who bring a bad name to all Kunoichi. Kin added as she charged at Sakura. Sakura had held her own against the other girl's onslaught, but her tiredness and smaller chakra reserves were her undoing, and she ended up on her knees. As I previously stated, you are nothing. As she grabbed Sakura's hair, the girl said. Nothing. Sakura's mind replayed that phrase. I am not nothing. She exclaimed angrily as Kin pulled out a kanai and was about to bring it down to Sakura's throat when Sakura grabbed her own kanai. I am nothing. Sakura roared before slicing her own hair off, causing Kin to stumble backwards. Sakura then hurled the kanai at Kin, only to have it blown away. Oh, I'm mad now. Kin yelled angrily and charged toward Sakura, but she came to a halt when she felt cold steel against her throat. Naruto. Sakura exclaimed with relief. Two things irritate me greatly. Naruto stated. One is threatening my friends, and the other is rudely waking me. Naruto informed the girl. Perhaps I should murder you. Naruto threatened as he tightened his grip on the girl's throat. The girl began to shake. Leave right away before I change my mind. Naruto spoke in a perilous tone. His icy blue eyes made them shiver with fear. However, that fear was misplaced when an evil chakra was released from within the shelter. Naruto's gaze darted to the shelter, where he noticed purple chakra pouring out. What exactly is that? As Naruto watched Sasuke fly through the air faster than Naruto had ever seen him move towards one of the shinobi, he had a thought. He had his foot between the shinobi's shoulder blades and each arm held behind him in an instant. A sickening pop and a wailing cry were heard. Naruto's eyes widened as he noticed the marks on his neck and face. Stop Sasuke. Naruto yelled as the boy turned and glared at him viciously. He appeared to be preparing to attack Naruto. Stop talking, Naruto. Sasuke snarled at him. Naruto moved faster than Sasuke could keep up with him and knocked him out. The marks retreated as Sasuke sagged. The group's leader placed a scroll on the ground. We'll give you this if you let us go said the man. Naruto pulled six earth scrolls and five heaven scrolls from his cloak. I believe I have plenty, Naruto stated. Now get out. As the man lifted his downed teammate and leapt away, Naruto gave the order. Naruto turned around to see Sakura collapse from exhaustion. Naruto approached, picked up the scroll, and dragged Sasuke onto his shoulder, as he did with Sakura, but more gently. My chakra control is messed up, and I can't do a shunshin. Naruto considered this as he leapt towards the tower. Unbeknownst to him, they were being watched. Or so the person thought as Naruto vanished in a burst of speed and was speeding through the forest. My speed has also decreased, Naruto reflected as he moved. How come I can't contact Kyuubi-chan? Naruto could see the tower in the distance and was speeding through the forest. No one could see Naruto move, and he didn't take long to reach the tower. Naruto could feel his strength slipping away once more. Oh my god, we're doomed if I don't get there in time. Naruto increased his speed once more, and he was now moving so fast that he barely avoided trees in his path. 
he noticed the tower approaching quickly. Just a little bit longer, Naruto reasoned as he moved. Naruto jumped one more time before landing in front of the tower. Naruto's legs were weakening as he walked. Just a little while longer. As he staggered to the gate, Naruto mumbled. He pushed it open weakly and walked in, Sakura and Sasuke falling from his shoulders as he fell to his knees. I've got to do something. As the edges of his vision began to darken, Naruto reflected. He reached into his cloak, pulled out one of the many scrolls, and opened it to reveal a word. He unfolded the other to reveal a phrase. The last thing he saw was smoke coming from the scroll and his name being yelled. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.